This is The Chris Abraham Show. Hey there, this is Season 6, Episode 22, and this is another preface upon the preface where I realized that I did a little bit of recon on that video that I'm going to tell you about. Um, So this didn't even happen in the U.S. This happened in Brazil. And Brazil, Brazil, bom dia, bom dia, Brazil has very different gun laws, and I think that like concealed carry is pretty like it's not easy to have guns down there so it's sort of like if you will a little bit like uh, a little bit like dc or california or new york city like even though there's an extreme amount of gun violence in uh in brazil it's generally not from it you know the guy wasn't from a constitutional carry state or anything else like that and apparently the big african-american guy was afro-brazilian and uh the reason why I got turned around is because it really did look like the pickup truck was a big American heavy-duty, ultra-duty uh, ve- vehicle. So based on that, like I was uh, a little confused. So on that note, doesn't change the tenor of the fact that in my life, I uh, treat everybody as if they're willing and able to use deadly force or willing and able to escalate the situation to the point where uh, the police will be involved. And escalation is death when it comes to uh, just about everything. Uh, It's funny because the people who are the most gun crazy, the concealed carry culture, is like so completely obsessed with, um, is so completely obsessed with the, uh, with the entire idea of like, you know, gray men, gray men, uh, which is to say you uh, never engage. You you are invisible. You are a gray man. You are anonymous. You do not bring attention to yourself. You go out of your way to avoid dangerous-looking people and threatening, uh, s- um, threatening situations. So, like, that's how I'm trained. I'm trained that unless I'm directly being threatened in a uh, kind of mortal way, or if I need to come to the help of someone else who's vulnerable and I need to protect them, uh, one does not boldly walk into pits of vipers just because one is armed. So anyway, this was the preface to the preface to the show, and I'll talk to you soon. Mahalo. Bye-bye. I thought I would write a preface to this uh, this particular episode, Season 6, Episode 22, 22, uh, 22, 22. Um, and it's basically about how if in a modern world where there's a lot of distress amongst the left and the right, uh, amongst, uh, Trumpers and anti-Trumpers against between woke and conservatives or whatever, you sort of have to treat the world like you're playing a game of Dungeons and Dragons. And you have to realize that every aggressive behavior you make, you're basically rolling a 20 sided dice, right? And uh, the number score you get is based how much damage the blowback will be. And I'm going to be talking about this video that I saw on X.com on Twitter, where a big guy, big black guy, was in a gas station. And you don't get the context, but you see him literally doing the equivalent of a door kick to the uh, back of uh, a big gray or blue or black pickup truck that is obviously owned by the skinny white guy who's behind the truck. He's in a t-shirt and jeans or khakis or something. Half his size. This guy is like six foot five and 300, 300 pounds of muscle and he's kicking this pickup truck. And the next thing that happens is out of nowhere, the guy uh, pulls a firearm from under his shirt, inside his belt, inside his waistband, in the area that's called appendix carry and uh, summarily shoots him twice in the uh, in the uh, center mass. 
looks like he's doing a double tap, but in fact, what he does is he shoots the guy when he's up, and then he shoots the guy when he's down, and then the scene is over. And uh, what he did is going to get him in jail. It's uh, it's not uh, he was he was defending his property and not defending uh, personal, not defending his life. I mean, he might be able to argue that this kind of violence between someone who's 300 pounds and someone who's 100. 40 pounds and five foot seven or five foot ten and skinny is sort of like proactive defense, but he's going to end up in jail. But I feel like it's like rolling a 20 sided dice, right? Like maybe this big guy has been able to exert his, his, uh, his, his, assert his will on people using violence and size uh, 19 times. And then he rolled a 20. And he just got shot twice and killed, right? So you need to treat life like it's a 20-sided dice. Maybe even a six-sided dice because it's kind of like a six or seven uh, bullet revolver where you're basically playing Russian roulette. And uh, anyway, I'll let you get into the longer form part of this. But I just wanted to say that it's kind of like, I mean, the glib thing people say is fuck around and find out. But it's honestly, uh, it's true. It's true. If you want to uh, ignore social norms, you might get uh, shot to death. It's quite possible. And it might not be from someone that you considered to look like a criminal, quote unquote. It's from someone who looks like your, you know, cousin Mike, your skinny cousin Mike, who was uh, high school baseball. And so anyway, love you guys. Talk to you soon. Hey there, this is the Chris Abraham Show, Season 6, Episode 22. My name's Chris Abraham, and it's raining here in sexy South Arlington, Virginia. And I did a full day of work at the library. And now I thought I'd... I did an earlier episode, but I thought I'd do another episode. I just saw this video on Twitter of uh, an altercation that didn't have any context between this, like, really big, burly African-American guy who out of context was um, full on like power kicking the rear panel of a really big gray pickup truck. Then there was a skinny white guy standing there. Apparently, probably it was his truck. And it's a uh, a video, I guess, uh, a, a security video of this altercation happening at a at a gas station. And uh, and there's no context, but. What happens is the skinny little white guy, after the big African American guy, kicks um, like full on like door kick, like door kicker kick, like the kind of kick that a JSOC operator does to knock down a door. Uh, did that to the back panel of the truck a few times, and out of nowhere, uh, the the skinny white guy pulled out a gun from a appendix, appendix carry, uh, and made two extremely good shots, one while he was standing and a very quick one when he was down. And they were into center mass. And the only reason they looked like a double tap is because the guy fell down. So he re, uh, re-aimed his gun and ma- shot twice into the guy and the guy was down. Now, everybody in the comments is like, that guy's going to jail. And I feel like of course he's going to jail, but neither person acted remotely sanely as if they were considering a risk analysis as to whether or not they were or weren't going to the jail, going to jail or or like being arrested and being in jail and awaiting uh, the trial date and needing to get uh, bail and all these other things, right? Even Even if you even if you have yourself a good defensive kill and, you know, you can argue that, you know, that guy was aggressively using his extremely big size to kick the hell out of your truck and you're standing right there, you can argue that you felt like your life was in danger, that he was using physical violence, aggressive physical violence, without any rational uh, behavior, without using his words, against your vehicle Uh, and as a result, you, uh, felt, uh, threatened for your life, but that probably won't work. But like I tell everybody who are like, well, that person's going to go to jail. So they're not going to assault me or shoot me 
or stab me or kill me. Like a lot of people put a lot of responsibility into the normies of the world, right? They don't, you can't tell who a normie is. You can't tell who, uh, you know, might have gotten back from Syria or might have PTSD or might have mental illness or might be on the spectrum. And the fact that you were making all that noise and being aggressive to his vehicle made him feel so threatened that he was going to do what his practice over the course of the last three years of doing concealed carry training taught him to do, which is when he was seeing life-threatening, aggressive physical violence, um, he was to not brandish a gun. When someone has a concealed carry license, or I guess in a constitutional state, you're taught in training, the moment you draw is the moment you shoot. You don't, you do, being, you know, making a decisive shoot uh, on the street with someone who you feel threatened by, whether real or imagined, is the only option. Otherwise, it's called brandishing. And you can get a felony by brandishing a firearm as easily as you can get a felony from using that firearm in an inappropriate way. So everybody's arguing that shouldn't have happened. He should have realized that it's out of proportion and that his his uh, his vehicle was being assaulted, not him. Um, but uh, honestly, this is going to happen a lot more. People are, ti are tired of a perceived comfort that they feel because there's no way that a normie is going to escalate against someone who's behaving crazy because, like, that's not what normies do. Normies are supposed to take it. You know, skinny white normies are supposed to take it double. And I believe that 2024 is going to unfortunately be the year of the vigilante and that uh, there's going to be 99% unclean kills and only 1% of a person who's like, do I literally feel like my life is in danger and this person is going to end my life if I do not uh, quickly uh, fire as many shots as is required to stop him into center mass uh, without any extras and without any uh, headshots, uh, just to show that I do not have any malice towards this person, only towards their behavior. And this is not done out of race or, or gender or sexuality. Uh, this is a clean kill based on, uh, nothing more than, uh, feeling like my life was truly in danger. And probably, uh, I would take a beating rather than shoot this person if I knew that they weren't going to kill me. Um, ergo, I need to respond proportionally to any kind of attack. So if I do not, am not in a parody based firefight with someone who's also using a, a same caliber pistol, I need to go into Taekwondo or kickboxing or knife fighting or, uh, volley song or, uh, Aikido or Taekwondo or judo or kung fu or karate or mixed martial arts or boxing so this is going to happen a lot more and people are just going to be like like don't forget like it's normal amongst people who have an extreme amount of toxic testosterone it's normal for people to kill each other based wholly and only on disrespect like this this belief that normie people do not respond with lethal behavior based on being humiliated or disrespected is, is a fallacy and it should not be relied upon. If you don't want to, in, in, a, in, a, in a time when 26 or 27 of the U.S. states have constitutional carry, if you're in one of those states, you need to assume that everybody you behave aggressively, rudely to, or quote, diss or disrespect, there's a pretty good chance that they're packing, strapping, um, carrying. And there's another big belief. There's a, there's a, like, if you believe in toxic masculinity, you really need to believe that someone's willing to go ahead and shoot you in the face for disrespecting them, right? Like, you only get to do that once. And when you do that once, you're in prison forever, unless, of course, you were actually 
very aggressively attacked and you're defending yourself like a home invasion or a mugging or uh, a shooting or something like that. But honestly, in a desperate world where people are perfectly happy uh, with not having to make their next month's rent and there's not a lot going on, and we live in a red pill, black pill, MGTOW world where the men don't have a lot going on either, uh, beating up their freaking uh, uh, F-250 truck is sort of like raping their wife. So it's kind of this idea where, you know, what are you going to, you can't go ahead and you can't, you can't do the maths. Like you cannot do the, the, cal the calculus associated with whether or not the uh, nerdy, skinny, like white guy who looks like a normie and looks like a pussy and is totally, uh, don't forget the, 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 one of the nicknames of the firearm is the great equalizer. So in my opinion, uh, 2024 is going to be the, uh, the year of the, um, I don't know. It's going to be a terrible year for people who are at their last, like, like there's going to be a resurgence of vigilantism based mostly on people believe, believing that um, they have no more fucks to give. This might be someone who's depressed, who has mental, mentally ill. It might be someone who just lost their job. It might be someone who just lost their job. It might be someone who, uh, who just got dumped. It might be someone who got divorced. It might be someone who is on parole. It might be someone who is waiting, jailing. It might be someone who has PTSD. It might be someone who um, uh, is a wimp and believes that any kind of aggressive six foot five, 300 pound muscular display against your property is going to end up in an ass kissing, an ass kicking, and he didn't want to delay anymore. Um, but if you aren't or are willing to assume that some guy who's a punk and a criminal and a gangbanger and so forth, if you're sure that you need to not respect someone in the street, not disrespect someone in the street, because they're more than likely to shoot you in the face, just remember that's only a man and that any man can behave that way and not to uh, play a game like that, especially in some place that has, you know, relatively completely permissive you know, uh, gun laws like uh, constitutional carry and, uh, and permitted uh, gun carrying and so forth, no matter how much. That's why there's literally in the books, crime of passion, right? Crime, you know, a uh, crime of opportunity. Uh, this is not going to be a murder rap. It's going to be a, a manslaughter rap or, 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 or it's going to be, I don't know, but, uh, but no, even if it's murder one with uh, with a with a like with a uh, 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 put you on death row with a guaranteed shot to the arm, lots of people in America, like what do they say? Every seven minutes or every sixteen minutes or whatever, a uh, vet commits suicide, right? Like if you're like tonight, I'm going to commit suicide with the gun that's in my belt appendix carry, uh, and then this guy does it. Uh, if we live in a place of desperation, people are going to do desperate things. Uh, the only people that do rational acts are people who feel comfort. They feel fed. They feel, they feel like they have a reason to live. They have people to live for. They have money in the bank. They have a retirement plan. Uh, they've got something going on. They have respect from people they love, from a girlfriend or a boyfriend or a non-binary friend but when you take anything like that away and all you've got left is your freaking pickup truck man uh the the probability of someone shooting you twice in a in a gas station because you're violently kicking their car approaches a hundred percent so on that note i thought i would uh you know throw a really very positive podcast into the mix uh, i treat everybody like they can possibly kill me if i'm rude to them and, you know, that works for me. Uh, anyway, love you guys. Talk to you soon. Uh, mahalo and aloha. This is Season 6, Episode 22 of The Chris Abraham Show. My name's Chris Abraham. Ciao.
Thank you for listening to The Chris Abraham Show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time. Thank <laughs> you.